Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Phoenix Rising, and I'm sipping on some French vanilla tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Burnt Umber, which I like to call brown, Titanium White, Fire Red, and Deep Yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there is also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The color I'm using is black. You could certainly use any color you'd like. I'm just going for a nice dark color so my, my Phoenix just pops right out of my canvas. So I'm gonna be using just black paint and long broad strokes. I will most likely paint the edges or the sides of my canvas. Um, because I'm using just a nice flat color and it's black, which always covers really well, you can really get away with any kind of brush stroke that you want. You could be doing circular brush strokes, you could do like long crisscross brush strokes, whatever brush stroke comes naturally to you, I would recommend using that to get your full coverage along the canvas. So that way you'll have kind of a equal coverage all around and you'll most likely hit as many spots as you need to hit. Um, I usually just, especially when doing a flat coat like this, I find I tend to kind of go around those edges to make sure that I get the, the sides of it. And then I just kind of go in that center area, usually just back and forth, left to right to give myself a nice full coverage. Black covers really well, so you most likely won't need to do two layers, but a lot of times I find when I am doing just a flat background that I most likely will like, I like to do two coats in order to give it, um, just make sure it's nice and solid and I don't have any streaking or anything along that line. But black usually covers pretty darn well, so I don't typically need a second coat. So once I've got this on here, what I like to do is I like to just kind of give myself some nice long brush strokes going all the way across. This will help to level out that paint, make sure that you haven't missed any spots, um, and make sure that it's not too thick or too thin in any area. And then we're gonna be using the same brush for the next step, so once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some flames. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are red and yellow. And if I need to, I might go into some black, but I think it's primarily gonna be just red and yellow. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. 
or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be painting my flames to be down at the bottom of my canvas where my phoenix is emerging from, as well as I want there to be the illusion of some flames behind the, um, the phoenix so it looks like it's almost being engulfed by these flames. So I'm gonna be using my bristle brush to do almost like a scrubbing type of technique to apply the faint flames behind the bird and then I'm gonna be using the same brush but I'll be using it with heavier paint to create more thick flames that are towards the foreground a little bit more. My paint is transparent or translucent, so it's going to see the black behind it. So the less paint I have the more uh, on, on the canvas, the more it will see the black behind it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about, and that's going to help us to get those flames behind the bird. So I'm going to start with a little bit of red paint on my brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself kind of a little bit of an outline of where I want the flames to go. So I'm going to start down at the bottom, and they're flames, so I'm always going to be using kind of a ripply type of brush stroke. I'm going to, this will be kind of where my bird is emerging in through here, so I'm, I'm going to consider that to be kind of the flat part of it. And then I'm going to take this red paint, and I'm going to just kind of rub it and up in these kind of ripply or wavy type of lines. So where it's thicker, it's going to be brighter red, and where it's thinner, it's going to be darker red because it's going to take on some of the appearance of the black behind it. So I'm going to still use a little bit of red. I'm going to come up on this left hand side and do the same thing. I'm going to put some faint ones, really faint ones behind in through here. So I hardly have any paint on my brush, just giving myself the illusion that there's some behind there as well. I'm going to put a little bit more up here on the left hand side. So again, I start, I start down at the bottom and then kind of let myself run out of paint as I'm going towards that top or towards the center of that. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow to do the same thing for these background uh, flames. So I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up a little bit of yellow. The yellow on top of the black may appear to have a little bit of greenish hue to it, which is totally fine because that's what's going to happen in a real flame anyways, especially when you've got some background darkness to it. So I'm just kind of bringing this up and mixing it in a little bit on top of that red or within that red. I'm putting more of the yellow down below as opposed to up top, but I will put a little bit up top as well. And again, very little bit of paint on my brush to just kind of get it to intermingle with that red a little bit. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of the remnants back in through here. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more yellow to get some more dramatic ones over on this side as well. And then once I feel like I have enough in the background, I will start to put them a little bit heavier down at this bottom area because this is where I really want it to feel like there's a lot of um, flames going. So I just picked up more red and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to not scrub it as hard so it doesn't remain, it doesn't get as transparent. I'm just using a lighter brush stroke with more paint. So this is going to allow me to have these darker or more vibrant pieces of flame on the in the foreground. And this is going to give us that depth perception in the in the fire flame um, that I am looking for on mine. So I'm just using red right now. I'm going to introduce a little bit of yellow to these front flames as well in a minute. And I'm just really giving them a lot of movement, just kind of, uh, uh, you could even kind of put a couple of sparks going up the side if you want to. Um, this is looking pretty good to me. I'm going to now start picking up a little bit of my my yellow without washing my brush. So just a little bit of my yellow in through here. Gonna give myself a little bit of the additional kind of brightness from that yellow in through here. And then I would just let it dry and if there's any additional um, infusion of the f flames that I wanna do, I certainly would do that because it's probably gonna dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet. So on yours, if it dries too dark, just come back in with another little layer on it and then you can get it to go as bright as you want. And then we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your flames done, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our phoenix. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So again, you can take a nice long break if you'd like to. It's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and then we're just gonna connect those markers. We'll have a couple of basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the coloring in process. So whenever I teach doing a bird, not whenever, but most of the time when I teach doing a bird, I like to start with two basic shapes. One is the shape of an egg for the body and the other is a circle for the head. And then all birds you can do like different size necks and beaks and feathers and tails and legs and all that good stuff, but you can easily start a bird with those two shapes. So I'm gonna start with my egg shape for the body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So mine is about here. That's about where the center of my canvas is. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up from that, maybe about a quarter to a half of an inch. That's where I'm gonna have the top part of my egg shape. My egg shape is gonna be a little bit tipped um, because we're gonna have the tail coming out over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, come down about three, three and a half inches from here. So somewhere about here and go over to the left almost an inch. This is gonna be the point or the tip of my egg type of shape. I'm gonna connect these two markers, but I'm gonna have it a little bit wider on this right hand side so it ends up being a little bit tipped. So I'm gonna start up in through here and then I'm just gonna kind of connect this in like this and then just bring it down to my tip in through there and then I'll connect here to up in through here and just connect it like that. So it's kind of a pointy egg. <laughs> you can make yours a little bit rounder if you want to, but this will work for me, a good start to my, to my bird. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a circle for the head. So I'm gonna come directly up from the top of here, maybe about another inch, make myself a marker, and then go up about another inch, inch and a quarter, make myself another marker. That's gonna be the top and the bottom. And then I'm just gonna connect those two giving them a circle type of a shape. It, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This just kind of starts it off for us. And if you notice, this is the right side of this is a little bit to the left of this chest part. This is gonna be the chest of my bird. I'm gonna connect my circle to my uh, body at, with a kind of a curved type of neck. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of my circle and just give it a little bit of a connect connection line in through there and then I'm going to start at the top of my head and I'm going to connect it into the back side of my bird. So I'm going to bring it in like this and then bring it down in like that. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a beak. Uh, this is a imaginary bird so you can really make your beak or structure of the bird however you'd like. If you want yours to have a larger beak or a smaller beak, feel free to do so. It's your, it's your bird. Then what I'm gonna do is the rest is gonna be kind of a loose type of um, lines because it's gonna be for the wings and the tail and the little top um, crown of my bird. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna give myself kind of the, um, the structure of my wings. So I have um, kind of a, a barrier where I put the head uh, where I put the crown of the head. So I'm gonna come down this right hand side a little bit somewhere in through here to start the top part of that wing and then on the left hand side I'm gonna do the same right about here. So you want these kind of to line up. You don't want one like down here and one up here. We're seeing a side angle of this so I want them to be kind of um, making sense with one another. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up way up in through here, so I'm maybe about three or four inches from the top of my canvas, and I'm just a little to the right of my face, and then I'm gonna just kind of bring this up in a little curving fashion like that. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one on the left, only my um, kind of bent part is gonna end up right about in through here. So I'm gonna take this from here, I'm gonna bring it like this, and when I go to flip this up like this, I know that I'm gonna have my left wing is gonna be longer and bigger because I'm seeing more of it at the angle my bird is at. So that's gonna be the top structure. 
Now, since I have that on there, I can do my little headpiece. So again, I'm just kind of having fun with just giving myself these little kind of markers where I want it. These, this is gonna represent feathers on the top of the head. So I'm just giving myself these little kind of loose lines just to tell myself where I want it to go. I might make it bigger or smaller when I go to paint it in, but that'll give me a good idea. The bottom of the wings is gonna come about halfway down the, um, the egg shape. So again, you want one side to kind of line up with the other, so about here and here. And then from here to here, it's gonna be just loose kind of feathery edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it um, up in through here and just kind of give myself this really loose kind of sketchily type of um, exterior edge so when I go to paint in I'll just have a guide to go by I don't need it to be anything um, anything perfect this one I'm gonna see kind of more out to the left hand side so maybe I've got this one almost all the way out to the edge of my canvas and then down at the bottom I've got it you know maybe coming something like this and again you can restructure these however you want this is just giving me a nice kind of uh, barrier to go from and I'm going to do the same thing with the tail too. the tail is going to come down from this area in through here I want it to kind of scoop up on this left hand side a little bit farther than the right because I've got my bird at an angle so I'm going to take it from here and then maybe just bring it a little bit to the right of here is about as far as I'm going to have it kind of coming out in through there and then on the left hand side as I do this I'm going to come I would say probably about half the distance from here to here, so maybe somewhere in through here, and just give myself these little kind of scooped out type of motions, and then I'm just gonna kind of, I'm almost just kind of um, like sweeping my chalk across here just to give myself this little bit of information. And then we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our bird. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are red, yellow, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a custom color that I'll be using as the base coat for the entire bird. So I'm going to, I've already pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed. I'm going for this kind of rusty type of color that I, Feel will help me accomplish some good depth in the body and in the feathers. So this is the color I'm going for. How I got to that was I used about equal parts of yellow, red, and brown, and then just a little bit of white paint in there. And you could certainly make yours more red or more yellow or more orange, or maybe you wanted to have a purple phoenix. You could make it whatever color you want. Um, I'm just going for something that maybe looks like he was created by the flames from underneath him. So this is the color that I'm using to start with. So once you've got your desired color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my smaller areas like my, my middle of my body and my head. And I'm just going to kind of slow down around the edges so I can get um, these little clean edges as I'm going around that beak. You could certainly use your smaller brush to do the area around the beak. I will most likely just use this brush, but if you feel that you want to get, uh, that you need or want to get a little bit more fine-tuned detail, you could certainly switch brushes. I'm just going to kind of go right up to the edge. I know that we're going to be doing lots of details on top of this, so if I don't get it perfect, that's fine. I'm just using this as my base coat, and then once I've got these little areas, you can see I'm taking my time just getting to my pencil, make sure that, or my chalk, make sure I get as much as I want. I'm gonna go ahead and do the body area in through here. So I'm not doing any fancy brush stroke at the moment, and I realize that because I have such a dark background, I most likely will be able to um, see that background underneath my paint. So you'll have the evidence of streakiness or light spots and dark spots which at this point of the game is totally fine because again we're going to be doing lots of layers on top of this so once i've got that done now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create or kind of follow my sketcherly um, marks that i did with my chalk 
So this, again, is going to start the process of those feathers, however you have them kind of displayed. You can have your headpiece even taller than mine. You can have it shorter than mine. Again, we're going to be adding more stuff to it. This is just going to start the process. When I go to do the wings, I'm going to do a pretty solid line at this top edge of it. And then when I go to do the, um, the tips of those feathers, I will do a more feathery type of brush stroke. So I've got this coming in through here. So as I get towards that body, I'm going to leave a little bit of a visible um, separation between my, my wing and my uh, body. So I'll leave a little bit of that black in through there. And then as I'm pulling out these feathery um, marks, I'm going to be pulling them from this main structure of this line in through here. And I'm gonna be pulling them in a direction that I feel that they would be um, coming off of that main structure. So as I'm getting towards the top, maybe I pull them up in this direction. As I'm along the sides, maybe I'm pulling them down in this direction. And if you can still see some of your um, pencil or your chalk mark right now, that's completely fine because again, we're gonna be doing more details afterwards. So this again is just giving us that base coat or layer to our um, to the whole bird. And again just kind of bringing this up in the direction I feel it would be coming off of this little um, main piece of the of the wing structure. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over on the other side. So I'm going to start and this wing will probably overlap the body a little bit because again it's on this side of its um, of the bird we're seeing more of this side so I'm gonna approach it a little bit differently when it gets to that part of the body so I've got this in through here and then I can overlap this part of the body to get to these um, bottom wings in through here and it's okay if I can't really discern the the difference between those two areas at this moment and again I'm pulling it off of this main kind of structured part up in through here in a direction that I feel that those wings would just kind of naturally be growing out of them. So something like this. And again, I can see my background through it. I'm okay with that at this point because that's going to happen with these, with this layering kind of process that I am um, looking to accomplish and I want lots of movement in these wings. So I'm flipping up some of these tips in through here and again you could be using a different color than I'm using I'm just choosing to do this so I can get some good dimension in these wings and they are complementary to the flame below so something like that works out for me maybe just pull these a little bit further and again I'm not terribly concerned about if I can see any of my chalk mark right now because we'll be doing layers on top of that and then again I'm going to approach this the same way so I'm going to start in through here and then just kind of pull it out in the direction that I feel I, I would say this is kind of the main structure part in through here and it would be kind of flipping out on the sides maybe more on this left hand side and then as I get in through here I feel like it would be kind of flipping in the underneath direction so I will curve it accordingly to how I feel it would be um, it would be flipping as the bird is flying out of the flames or being created from the flames. However you want to assume or imagine this mythological type of creature is emerging from this, uh, from the flames below. And then on this side over here, I'm just gonna kind of pull this up and you could certainly blend it in with the actual flames itself. I'm looking to um, have mine look a little bit separate from them so you can so it pops out a little bit more but if you wanted it to kind of morph into those flames feel free to do so that'll that'll give it an, another kind of interesting illusion and then I'm going to be using this same mm, actually no I think I'm going to use my small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the head. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, white, yellow, and red. 
and probably that custom color. So all of the colors on my palette is what I'm gonna do. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little eye and I'll separate out the beak from the, the head itself and we'll add some strategic little details and just a, know that as you're going through this process, this is a imaginary kind of bird. So the beak doesn't have to be perfectly in proportion with mine. Yours can be bigger, it can be smaller, it can be yellow, it can be white, it can be whatever you imagine it to be. So I'm just going to make mine have some uh, kind of iconic type of um, bird features and of course you can change yours as you see fit. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to create an eye. So I'm going to go from to the left of where I have this little dip in the head to the beak. I'm going to go to the left of that maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch and I'm going to give myself um, kind of like an oval type of a shape for my eye with maybe a little bit of a point in that top left corner and then maybe just bring it down a little bit towards um, the beak in the in the bottom right hand corner. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a tiny little nostril. So again, just black paint on my brush. I'm going to have my nostril, I would say maybe somewhere right about in through here and of course yours can be wherever you imagine it to be. I'm going to have a little separation between the top part of the beak and the bottom part of the beak so I'm just going to take my black and just kind of bring a little bit in through here. I don't want it to be too drastic but something that just gives me a little bit of a separation in through there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush and I'm going to give myself a little sparkle in the eye so I'm just going to put a little tiny sparkle in through here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a grayish type of or tan type of a color to do my beak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, white plus brown. So I'm just going for a tan type of a color for my beak. You can make yours again whatever color you want. I'll be putting some highlights and stuff on it but this will just give me a little bit of detail to it. So I'm going to have my beak right here, obviously, <laughs> but when I go to paint it in, I'm not painting in a solid color. I want there to be some light spots and dark spots. I'm going to put a highlight on it in a minute, but um, right now I'm just kind of wanting to give myself the... Um, just a soft type of a color to it. I know that on the the... This is kind of the top part of it in through here, so I'm going to just make that a little bit pointy. And then I'm just going to kind of fade that um, beak color out into the main part of the head, and then I'll get it to um, blend in a little bit more in a second. So I'm just kind of lightly rubbing it on here, letting myself run out of paint, giving myself just the... Um, the essence of this color just kind of blending into that face a little bit in through here. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that tan, to give myself a little bright spot above the eye. Maybe, maybe there's little tiny feathers around that eye or something, so that'll help me to put a little bit of detail in through there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and yellow on my dirty brush so I can give myself a little bit of a highlight on the on the front part of this beak. So this is a little bit of white and yellow just to accentuate maybe a little nostril part and a little highlight to the top or front part of that beak. And of course, again, yours can be as subtle or as dramatic as you want. I'm picking up a little bit more white paint in order to give myself maybe a little bit brighter um, bits on this part around the eye as well. And these little tiny details are just going to add to the illusion of this having life. Even though it's, a, again, a, a mythological kind of creature, you can certainly still give it a lot of life by adding these um, realistic type of qualities to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this top feathery part. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of red and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm going to put some darkness right at the um, bottom part of the forehead in through here. So this is red and brown. And then I'm going to put a little bit of this darkness behind the eye in through here. And this is going to um, help me to kind of layer those head feathers on there. I'm going to also put a little bit of this underneath this chin 
area in through here and maybe get it to blend into that beak mouth part, something like that. And again, just have fun with this. I'm picking up a little bit more brown to put maybe a shadow underneath this neck in through here so it kind of just blends down into that neck portion. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more um, brown just to get this a little bit darker in through here and maybe on the back side of this eye in through here as well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building the, um, and you can put little streaks of colors through throughout too. If you're feeling like you want a little bit more dimension or detail, just when you've got a color on your brush, just like I just on that cheek rubbed in a little bit of that brown. So just, you know, whatever you're feeling at that moment, if you like the color that's on your brush, just incorporate it into that um, structure. So the little feathers on the head, I'm gonna start with some red and my um, my custom uh, rusty color. So this is red plus that original color that we had um, created for the um, feathers and the base coat themselves. And this is just gonna give me my um, the, the direction of all the feathers that I want kind of coming off of this head. I'm gonna add some lighter colors in a minute, but this just gets me started with a nice kind of darker, more solid base to, um, to build the lightness around it or on top of it. Now I'm gonna pick up on my dirty brush a little bit of yellow and white. I'm gonna give myself a nice bright forehead in through here. So this is yellow and white, and I'm just pulling it down into that dark part. So what this is gonna do is just make that forehead just kind of pop out a little bit. And again, you can get yours to go as light or as dark as you want. I'm also gonna go out and try and um, eliminate any of those pencil or chalk marks that might be still a little bit evident for me. So just kind of util utilizing a little bit of white and yellow to brighten up this forehead area so that pops out just giving these little tiny feather marks by that forehead and now i'm going to start pulling down these bright i'm using yellow and white i've got more yellow on my brush right now i'm pulling out these beautiful long vibrant kind of feathers that are just kind of cascading back from the top of the head and again you have fun with with the color combination i'm getting these to overlap the red and the um and, and the that uh, initial color that we had put on there and you can get them to overlap in different directions i'm kind of using a similar um, directional type of brush stroke over here but i'm getting them to just overlap like they're longer and they're they're kind of um, draping over and then i'm going to take this yellow and white and just kind of pull these little bright pieces in this top area up in through here and again you can just keep layering it. Like if I feel I want more red, I pick up more red. I just picked up a little bit more red to get these to really talk to each other and make it look like they, they belong with one another. So you just keep adding those colors. Red and yellow go back on my brush right now to get these little tips a little bit more vibrant. And I'd let it dry. And if there's anything additional that I want to do to it, I certainly would do that. Um, but I'm going to let it dry first. And then for the next step, we're going to be using the same. Uh, no, actually, we're going to use our medium. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your bird head done, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our feathers and our tail. Well, I guess that'd be, so the arm feathers and the tail feathers, <laughs> arm feathers, wing feathers. <laughs> I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, red, my custom, rusty color yellow and white and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from my dark feathers to my light feathers so in order to give this some good dimension I want there to appear to be almost an underside to these wings like in we'll call it the wing armpit area <laughs> I don't know the right terminology, but in through here, we'll have darker spots. And then down underneath here, we're gonna have some legs in a little while, but I wanna have like a nice dark area in through here. And then I'm gonna progressively get lighter and lighter as I go towards the tips of the feathers. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of red and brown, about equal parts on my brush at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, use my feathery type of brush stroke 
on the inside of this wing up in through here and I my paint is transparent so you're able to see the colors underneath it so I'm utilizing that to my advantage to get this nice dark area I'm leaving a little bit of a light spot up at the top so that um, we can still have almost like the structure to the wing up at the top. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So red and brown, about equal parts, are on my brush. I'm going to kind of darken up this little area as it's touching the bird chest in through here. So again, it's going to give you a nice illusion um, that there is almost like a shadowy type of area underneath here. And then I'm gonna bring this up. I'm leaving again a little edge in through there and then just kind of rubbing this out or bringing out some of this color into the um, neighboring feathers. And then you can certainly bring, I think I'm gonna bring a little bit more of this red down towards the tips of these bottom ones because I feel like they would be maybe a little bit darker. So I just picked up a little bit more red. So just pulling just a little bit more down into these bottom little um, tips of the feathers in through here. And this also helps to get rid of any of your chalk marks. <laughs> so if you have little chalk marks here and there, you can just kind of utilize that. So again, brown and red is going back on my brush to uh, get this little dark area in through here. So I've got brown and red, and this is gonna get this area to be nice and deep dark underneath here, making it appear as though there is some um, you know shadowy type of areas down in through there. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more red just to transition into the little bit of more vibrant areas. So now that I've got that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way towards the lighter feathers. So I can transition with my, um, with my rusty color. I didn't wash my brush, I just am picking up some of that color in order to get some of this red off of my brush and to transition into the lighter um, feathers that we're gonna have at the tips. So this is just a great way as you're, as you're going from dark to light to do it in a gradual type of way. So I had the red already on my brush and now I'm just picking up the next progressive lighter color, which would be the base color that we um, utilized initially. So again, just doing that all around where the red is gonna connect to that, um, to the, the lighter feathers. I'm just bringing in a little bit of that original um, color that we had used. So now I want to transition into even lighter. I don't necessarily want it to go too, too yellow. So what you can do is you can take your, um, your rusty color and add some yellow and white to it. I, you could certainly just pick up yellow and white and go for that next lighter color, but I fear if you do that, it might turn too yellow. So this is a good way to do that, go to a lighter color without making it too vibrant. So I just uh, created this light, um, creamy color, and I'm gonna use that on my brush with my rust color to get to my lightest of light areas. So I've got both of those colors on my brush. I'm gonna start up in through here, giving myself this transition on the kind of on the structure, structured part. And now I can bring this mid-tone that's got some lighter hues in it into these tips. So something like this. And you can really see how dramatic it is going to look against those darker colors. And this again is when you can start to get rid of any of your little chalk marks that might be um, be a little bit too evident for you. And if it's too light, just keep picking up that base um, rust color. And that's gonna help you to transition without going too light too quick. And then these little tips down here, I'm not gonna make them too, too light, just kind of you know, dabbing in a little bit of these highlights in through here, but just enough to say that they're being highlighted, but not too much to take away from the effect. And then I'm gonna go over to the next wing again with my rust color plus my light cream color and going to get this highlighted part up in through here and then just bring it all the way to these little tips and just allow myself to give this beautiful bright illuminated um, value to the edges of these 
these wings and same thing as I'm coming down this corner, I can just kind of use the remnants on my brush to get this to, to blend in a little bit and get it to transition down kind of into the, the little bit of darker region down here. Again, I haven't even reloaded my brush. I'm just using the, the remnants on my brush in through here of what I had used initially. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the tail feather. So again, just that light cream color plus my rust. And I'm gonna get this to where I feel that I would want the brightest of the bright tips to be, just kind of pulling this out. And you can pull it out farther than you had the original footprint. Don't feel like you have to just like stay right in that spot. You, I mean, these are feathers, so some are gonna be out farther than others, some, you know, and, we started with just a a, um, a, a a concept or idea of where we wanted them to go. This is the time where you get to just explore how far out you really um, want to pull them and how feathery you want them to look and how alive and how much movement you want to have in them. So just exploring your own sense of um, visual preference will will work out and will make this into your own type of bird. I'm just gonna pull a couple of these up in through here. And then I'm gonna add just teeny tiny bits of an even brighter tone. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up that light tan plus a touch of white. And this is gonna give me, it's gonna complement the little bit of white that I have in the bird's face. And I'm just gonna kind of pull just a couple of little bright spots, maybe over on these teeny tiny tips over on the edge and I'm not pressing too too hard and you can always if you feel like you've done too much you can always go back and um, bring back some of that original t color to it the um, base color that we used on the that rusty color and you can always add a tiny bit of water onto your brush too that'll help you to get maybe these little um, more slender type of tips to it so there's all kinds of little tricks that you can use to just kind of um, help you along as you're going through this process. If you just, you know, want little tiny bits, use a smaller brush. If you want skinnier, uh, skinnier lines, you could use a smaller brush or use a tiny bit of water on your brush in order to give you a little bit more control with the tip of um, your brush. And then I, I feel like this is looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna probably let it dry, step back from it for a minute, see if there's any additional marks that I wanna make on mine. And then I will get prepared for the next step. Um, I'm gonna be using my small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to be finishing the body and we're gonna put a couple of legs and feet on our bird. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, white, brown, my rust color, and then that light creamy color that we made in the previous step. So what I'm in essence gonna be doing is adding some highlights and shadows to give dimension to the body itself, maybe a little bit on the neck as well, and then I'm gonna be adding a couple of legs in through here so it looks like it could stand if it needed to. So I'm gonna start by um, using my rust color to put a couple of legs in place. So I'm just gonna go in this vicinity, giving myself maybe um, a pretty solid leg coming out right in through here. And I want it to just kind of naturally look like it's um, coming out of maybe this region of the of the body. So I, it's I'm doing it kind of like in a teardrop type of a shape, something like that. And then the second one is gonna come out of the other side of the body. So if this, if the, bo the body itself kind of comes in through here, I'm just putting this line here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna have the other leg kind of coming out this little part in through here. And I'm gonna make them about the same length, which would make sense to me. Um, and this one's gonna just kind of get a little bit darker in through there. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight and shadow in a minute, but I just wanted to kind of get them in place so we knew um, where they were going. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black to give myself a couple of little feet in through here. So just at the bottom of here, I'm just gonna bring out um, kind of like the 
we'll call it the bird ankle part, <laughs> and then maybe a little, um, I think they're called talons, the, the fingers, something like this. And of course, you can imagine yours to be whatever you want yours to be. So if, you're, if you want yours to be longer or shorter than mine, feel free to, to do that in whatever way that you want. I think you want it to kind of look large enough to um, support this bird itself. So, you know, if you if you make them too, too small, they might look a little out of proportion. So just make sure that you make them what you feel to be big enough for that specific bird that you have that you have drawn. So it looks pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to create some dimension on this body while the um, legs are drying. So I'm going to pick up some brown paint and I'm going to make sure that this left hand side of the body is nice and dark. Maybe put a little bit on this back side of the neck in through here. Um, and then as I work my way towards the right side of the body, I'm going to start picking up my rust color. So what I'm in essence doing is just creating a little bit of dimension on that body as it's going to the left hand side. This um, the, the tail feather back here is just sitting behind that, so I don't really need to do much there. Maybe a little, I'm picking up a little bit of um, black just to kind of maybe get this a little bit darker underneath here. Just again, making sure that everything has enough dimension on it for my painterly eye to be, to um, like it. So that works in through there. Maybe a little bit more black underneath this little guy in through here. That works good. All right, so now that I've got that shadowy part on there, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up more of that rust color that we created just to make sure that I've got um, a nice coverage on the, uh, on, the, um, on the area that I'm not gonna to put too much highlight. So this is gonna be just this main um, section in through here. My biggest highlight is gonna come down in through here where I feel it's being illuminated by the flame. From, um, from below. So that's where I'm gonna put my biggest highlight. So I just wanna make sure that this has good coverage. Now what I'm gonna start picking up is my light cream color. So that's gonna go on in my highlighted area in through here. So I'm pretty heavy handed with it right now because I know I want this area to really um, take on a nice light or bright appearance that it's really getting um, highlighted by that flame. So I'm, I've got a, a quite a bit of paint in through there and then what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing it back into the darker area. So that's gonna help me to add form and dimension to the bird and it's also going to um, tell a great story about the uh, effect that that flame is having, the, the light source is having on the bird's body. So something like that is looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna add a little bit of this light cream color on the edge of the legs as well. So something like this is gonna illuminate those um, legs also. So on that right hand side where I feel that they are the closest to the, um, to the flame, that's where I'm gonna put that um, illuminating value. I think I'm picking up I'm picking up some of my rust color too just to get this to blend in a little bit so it's not too too much for my eye that works in through there and then that's looking pretty good looks believable to me <laughs> I think I'm gonna add a little wing a little feather in through here I just picked up more of my rust color I feel like I want to I want to overlap this just a little bit more in through here like it's standing up just a, or it's up just a little bit more yeah there we go so those are you know those little adjustments i make on on the fly no pun intended when i feel that i i you know i need to accentuate something or make something stand out i'm going to add a little highlight onto my feet so i'm picking up that um the tan color that we made on the beak so it's a little mixture of brown and white and i'm just going to put a little tiny highlight on the side where the flame is so again this is just kind of allowing me to add little bits of detail to um make sure that i have everything you know saying what i wanted to say and giving the information out that i want to that i want to project on my on my beautiful bird here and I guess it can have as many toes or talons as you want now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint just to um, further accentuate that um, 
that chest area. So a little bit of white paint is gonna get my final highlight on this uh, chest area. And then once I've got this on here, I, I do like to just kind of step back, let things dry, see if I, you know, if they dry in the intensity that I want them to. And if I feel like I need to accentuate any more, I certainly will do so. But that's, uh, this, that's the predominant step of how I'm going to execute this. So you can certainly make any little adjustments that you want. We're going to be using the same small brush for the next step. So you can finish up your little body here, wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm definitely signing this one in red. I'm gonna go uh, bottom left on this one. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very powerful bird and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.